Hey guys, this is part two, the final part of my knurling on the G0602. Although in this video, we're not going to be covering any actual knurling. Uh, I'm just going to be going over uh, the calculations for knurling, and we'll be doing um, ideal work diameter, depth of knurl, and also calculating the uh, teeth per inch on your knurling roller if that wasn't supplied by the manufacturer. Uh, all the information that I'm going to show you here is available in the Dorian Knurling catalog. There's a link in the description. If you think I'm doing it wrong or if you use my methods and get bad results, then I'm probably uh, giving you guys the information incorrectly. So take a look at that catalog. Frankly, if you just want to learn more about Knurling, take a look at it. There's tons of information in there. I'm only covering just a small fraction of what they actually offer in that catalog. It's pretty impressive. Uh, anyway, so to jump right in, the first thing you'll want to do for any of the following calculations is know the pitch of your knurling tool and if you don't know that there's a couple ways you can do it you can take a pencil and just rub it on the knurling teeth around the the circumference of your knurling roller and then just you know drag the roller on a piece of paper and take your uh, calipers and measure uh, you know how many marks are made over the course of an inch 16 marks on a piece of paper came up to about 993 which means I'm pretty close to being 16 teeth per inch so uh, there's the easier way to do this is to just calculate it and it's actually quite a bit faster too you can do that by just counting the number of teeth and dividing it by the diameter of your knurling roller multiplied by pi and in my case uh, 38 teeth and the three-quarter inch diameter knurling roller gets us again pretty close to 16 teeth per inch so I'm pretty confident that 16 teeth per inch is what the uh, actual pitch is for my roller and we'll be using this number going forward Typically, people want to find an ideal tracking diameter for their material, uh, and this is because if you don't have an ideal tracking diameter, you're more likely to get cross-threading and just bad results in general. So to do that, you need to calculate first uh, this teeth on material, and if you assume a half-inch aluminum, uh, half-inch diameter aluminum for my tool, three-quarters of an inch and 38 teeth, you come out to roughly 25 teeth uh, on material and you need to round that number up or down you don't want to go any further than this with a decimal so um, in my case I rounded it down to the next whole number which is 25 and we can use that in the next equation and if you jump down a little bit you'll see I've got this correction factor and I'll explain that here in just a moment but if we use 25 divided by 38 uh, teeth on the roller multiply that by the diameter of the roller which is three quarters of an inch plus the correction factor and in my case the correction factor is ten thousandths then you come up with a material diameter of half inch. Now, if you're using half inch, uh, you know, rough aluminum, you want to turn it down to some other diameter so you can get, you know, a nice clean uh, surface to knurl on. So all you need to do is change that 25 to 24, and the next lowest diameter is 480 thousandths in my case. And as what this tells us is, I have a 20 thousandths multiple where if the diameter of my work is a multiple of 20 thousandths, I'm going to be, I'm going to have ideal tracking and I should get best results. Now I actually set this up once uh, as a worst case scenario going 10 thousandths away from an ideal diameter and I still got really good results. And I think the most important thing is actually the depth of cut. So we're going to cover that in just a moment. In my experience, as long as the depth of cut is above what I consider to be the, min the minimum, then you should get good results anyway. But it's still nice to try to strive for an ideal diameter and uh, if you if you get pretty close, I think you're going to be pretty happy with uh, with your neural in the end. Uh, so about that correction factor, this actually this table came right from the Dorian catalog, and if they explained it, uh, I either missed it or didn't understand it because I just took this as a given. I have no idea where they got these numbers. Since I have 16 teeth per inch, uh, my correction factor is 10 thousandths, and let's just move on. To estimate the depth of uh, your knurling cut, depth of cut, whatever you want to call it, you'll take 1 divided by your pitch and multiply it by 35%, and this gives me 22 thousandths. Now, the reason I consider this the minimum is in my own testing, when I was knurling at 15 thousandths or 10 thousandths, I was more likely to get bad results, uneven cuts uh, or uneven impressions in the work, or uh, cross-threading. And so uh, anytime I was above 22 thousandths, the results only got better and I went all the way up to I think 40 or 45 thousandths and I just liked the results more and more as I made a, a deeper and deeper cut so use this number to, esti to estimate the uh, minimum and then just always work above that and I think you'll be great do some testing and see uh, if you prefer a deeper cut versus a more shallow cut but I think if you stick with this formula you'll get at least a good cut 
Also, this 35% comes from the Dorian catalog. This works for straight and diagonal tooth rollers. Two diagonal tooth rollers make a diamond pattern, but there are some rollers that have a diamond pattern in each roller. And if that's your application, then 35% is not correct, and you'll need to consult the Dorian catalog for that number. But as long as you're using straight or diagonal, you'll be good to go. And also, you can go ahead and download my free Excel spreadsheet calculator. This is available at randomroughstuff.com. And uh, all you need to do is fill out these three gray values, the rough material diameter, the neural tool diameter, and the number of teeth on your knurling tool. And I'll give you the closest material diameter, the, uh, the next lowest and the next highest, as well as the pitch and the depth at which you can knurl. If you have any problems with this calculator, if it doesn't work, let me know and I'll try to fix it. Uh, but again, you can download it for free. And I've locked all the fields except for those three gray ones to try to make it a little bit easier on everybody. Uh, and that pretty much covers what I wanted to what I think is important when it comes to knurling. So uh, thanks for watching this one. Go ahead and leave me your comments and questions below, and don't forget to subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.